Hey guys, Songo here with another video. I was just messing around with uh, OBS for like a couple hours <laughs> trying to figure out why my sound was not recording. But now that I've got it figured out, I, um, I'm going to go over what you probably see on the screen here. The 13 Pillars of Perfect Play, inspired by Ben Franklin's 13 uh, Virtues of Perfection, or something like that. Basically, this is, be this is done because my English teacher was want, uh, had assigned extra credit. And I wanted to be a little bit more creative than what most people would probably have done, and uh, apply this virtues or whatever type of system or whatever that Ben Franklin used and applied it, applied it to Heroes of the Storm. So let's go through the list. Uh, first of all, okay, how, how are these done? Um, ben Franklin focused on one uh, aspect, one virtue at a time for a week. The uh, extra credit is just to do it for a day each one. So will be done in about two weeks if he requires all 13. But uh, that doesn't really matter for our uh, purposes that we're talking about. Well, actually, um, so. I arranged these in order that they should probably be worked in, worked on first, and the so that it would build up and let the next one be easier to master. And that's why I went ahead and okay. Anyway, let's just get on to the virtues. This is also mostly so that my teacher doesn't have to read all of it. But anyway, okay. Virtues, perfections, pillars. Yes, okay. Number one, self-control. Let not rage nor greed control your actions. Think rationally, not rashly. Too often people, uh, well, they go on tilt and can't make the proper calls and uh, if you don't know what tilt is it's basically you're you are constantly seeing your failures and thinking that you can't win this is not this is what the point of not letting your rage control your action the uh and there are many things more important than getting kills in this game Thus, the uh, not letting greed control your actions. The uh, second part is kind of self-obvious, self-evident, something like that. Number two, here to party. It was a name suggested by someone I'll call Ilzy Dick, or Ilzy Nick, uh, because his name sucks, and really his... Uh, Names don't really match my style, but whatever. So, here to party. Let your messages be soft and friendly, not harsh and vile. A happy team is a... Well, at least they don't want to lose just to spite you. I think that's pretty self-evident. Er, I'll just be using the word self-evident for whenever I think it doesn't need it. Uh, explanation. Number three, map awareness. <laughs> Let not ten seconds go by without checking the map while in the game. Know who is missing and where your team is. Uh, for those who don't know of the game, most of you probably don't know, but my teacher might not. Um, there's a mini map where it shows all of the visible enemies as well as your entire team. 
by constantly checking the map, you will know, or at least have a good uh, sense of where everyone is, including your enemies, even when they go, when they disappear from the mini map, because that indicates that they are moving outside of um, vision, which means they are likely moving to another lane or going to get a mercenary camp. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but it basically means they are moving and your other knowledge will allow you to know exactly where they are going. Number four, service. Again, Ilzenik, uh made the name suggestion, but uh, it's the best I've got. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Respond to pings for the team might know more than you, and use pings for you might know more than them. Also, Rex Jordanaire had uh, inspired the original concept for this pillar of perfection. Uh, pings are basically a quick way of uh, conveying information to your team. For instance, the danger ping means that there's danger coming, or that you should probably stop doing whatever you're doing. Number five, you're talented. <laughs> Actually, my own name this time. Check at least your enemy's talents every time you take a talent of your own. Learning the talents as many of as many characters as possible and memorize what they look like will and memorizing what they will look like what they look like will make this faster in game time. Talents are basically customization options for your heroes in the game. Um that's basically just the gist of it. If you know the game, then I don't need to explain this any further. And if you don't know the game, then me explaining it further isn't going to help you, you understand it. So, yeah. Number six, be the prey. We are moving more into the tactics or um, strategy area now. Be the prey. Know what you can kill, including, er, know what can kill you, including how, why, and what you can do to avoid them. The name was also suggested by Ilzenik. Basically, before the match even starts, work out who is going to kill you, how they are going to do it, and under what conditions that this is going to happen. And why would you be getting targeted? You want to also know that so that you can manipulate the enemy's targeting. But that will be uh, spoken on later. Right now you just want to know the how, when, why, and where, and what. Anyway, all of that stuff actually acting on that knowledge is going to come later, as is the um, style of Ben Franklin, whose uh, virtues are very narrow in their definitions, and thus allows you to focus on a single thing to absolute mastery, or at least attempt to. Number seven, be the predator. Know who, what, how, and when you can kill, and how they might avoid you. Again, the name was suggested by Ilzenik. Basically, this is the inverse of the last one. Now that you know what can kill you, you can start going aggressive, uh, trying to find aggressive information. Uh, on how you might kill them. After all, if you're dead because you didn't anticipate what would kill you, then 
knowing how you would kill them doesn't really matter. Thus, being the prey is before being the predator. And all of that logic I used on 6 is now applied to 7, but, uh, yeah, okay. Number 8, positioning. As a ranged character, since that's basically the only role I play. Never get in range of a tank's crowd control while it's off cooldown, and never be in a spot where they can hit you before you can hit them. This typically involves being behind your own tank. To explain this, <laughs> uh, a tank is a very sp uh, healthy and hard to kill character in this game. Crowd control is anything that uh, takes control away from your character and makes them vulnerable to enemy offense. And cooldowns are... Well, it's the timers between multiple casts of an ability. In this case, we are referring to the crowd control. And the second is to never be in a spot where they can hit you before you can hit them. Basically combining both of the above into a single action to not be overly aggressive when they can actually respond. Number 9. Know your limits. Everyone has faults, even you. Find them. Fix them not just yet, but later. Find as many faults as possible. Where do you suck and where can you improve? Add them to this list and work on them as their turn comes. The idea was inspired by Mazram Lap. And again, the name was suggested by uh, Ilzy Nick. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's kind of self of self evident. But basically, it adds a continual layer to to this list, and it depends on where on the exact person actually using this. So yeah. And number 10. Respect thy foe. Every game, look at how well the enemy is doing rather than how poorly. Since they are going to be the same general skill level as you. Notice what they are doing better than you. Take notes and add them to this list. This is... Now we are moving behind beyond your beyond you and looking at your enemies because yeah they are of the same general skill level as you they may be worse than you in certain areas but they are almost certainly better than you at others and this is what you need to take note on <laughs> and love thy name ah Love thy neighbor. Similar to the previous one, every game, look at how well your own team is doing and respect their decisions. Knowing where they are doing well will allow better play calling. Similarly, take notes on everything they, can, they do better than you and add them to this list. <laughs> Again, now that we are looking at other people, we are, we can now take a less, cr we can take a critical look at our own team without saying, man, my team sucks. Eh, or at least that's kind of the idea. But anyway, <laughs> also, yeah. Play calling is, um, for those uninitiated, uh, basically, when you decide what the team is going to do, and yeah, that's play calling, basically. Next, number 12, exploit weakness. Exploit weaknesses. 
You have flaws, but so does your enemy. You can spot where they are strong, so avoid that. Prod for weaknesses until you can find one. And exploit them. That should be a them, not a it, since weaknesses is plural. I'll fix that. Anyway, I think that's kind of self-evident. And then Chess Master. <laughs> for number 13. Think several moves ahead. If you are going to use your blink, what will the enemy do? What are they looking to do right now? What are they look? What about after they do that? How do you counter what they will do, or avoid being vulnerable? The idea was inspired by Friend of Owly Beats, and again, the name was suggested by Ilzinek. Ah, uh, my previous name was Master Chess. Chess Master kind of sounds better. So yeah, I'll credit Ilzy Nick for that. Anyway. Um... Is there... Basically it's saying, plan what you're gonna be doing, and think of, that, of what your enemies are also planning to do and then plan around their plans, so that you can plan around their plans to plan around you. No, I won't get into that. Anyway, I think it's kind of self-evident as well, based from on just my description here. So, ah, uh, thank you to everyone who helped contribute to this list. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I hope my uh, teacher gives me a good grade. Thank you, and have a good day.